I'm going to present you the, uh, the project we carried out with uh, Laurence Fèvre at, uh, from the GAD laboratory uh, at the CHU in Dijon and Caroline Demilly uh, from the Vignette Hospital in Lyon as well as Arnaud Leleu, uh, Fanny Poncé and Diane Rucco from the team uh, Developmental Ethology and Cognitive Psychology in Dijon. The purpose of the project The purpose of the project was to develop another approach that allowed us to record a brain marker of facial information processing to study the typical and atypical development of face and facial emotion processing. Uh, to this end, we have used an approach that was updated by Bruno Rossian and his team, first in Louvain-la-Neuve in Belgium and now in Nancy. And the objective of the project, the current project, uh, was to develop this approach in infants and people with atypical development in collaboration with Bruno Rossi. This, this approach is fast periodic visual stimulation or FPVS, the FPVS approach, coupled with EEG recording. It consists in uh, displaying a picture quickly here. For example, six pictures per, per second. Uh, at a rate a frequency of 6 Hz. This stimulation elicits a brain response at the same frequency if you analyze the data in the frequency domain. You, have, you see a peak here uh, for 6 Hz and its harmonics, any multiple of 6. You can see the topography of the brain response here. If you introduce another stimulus at a lower frequency, for example, here a smiling face among neutral face, at a, it was one picture uh, every six picture, or at a frequency of 1.2 hertz. Uh, you will generate a response, a brain response at the same frequency, like here or here. And here you have the topography of this response. Thus, all the brain response that is common to all the stimuli here is isolated here, and here you uh, isolate the brain response that is specific to the stimulus display at this frequency. Uh, in my presentation, I will focus on the specific response, this response, uh, because the general visual response was not influenced by uh, the manipulation we did in our studies. An important point is that with this approach, we obtain a good signal to noise ratio response, as you can see here. In a few minutes for this uh, topography, uh, we use six stimulation of uh, 30 seconds. And we can also perform individual analysis. To show you uh, what it looks like, Uh, I, I, um, I'm going to show you a short video of one of our uh, studies. The picture size uh, was randomly uh, varied at every stimulation for, uh, for each picture, picture. And participants had to do a parallel task to get their attention away from the face. Uh, here, it turned uh, oh. Okay. So you see the stimulation. The participant had to look at the circle and to press the space bar. Each time the circle turned to a square. I think you see the manipulation. In a first study, we investigated whether um, it was possible to record the brain markers of the detection of expression change in typical adults. With a procedure uh, similar to what I have just described, uh, we displayed an expressive face here, 
among natural face, faces with an increasing uh, intensity. We recorded a response to the change in expression that gradually increased emerged with higher intensity. This was, uh, there was some variation depending of, um, on the expression, but overall, the response was recorded over right occipital region over the sc scalp. In the following study, we wanted to see if uh, this response also emerged uh, when the, the expression is contrasted with all the other expressions. In other words, is it possible to isolate the specific response uh, to an expression that discriminate, discriminate it from all other. As before, one expression was regularly displayed at uh, every five pictures, for example, here, disgust or happiness. Um, but this time, uh, instead of displaying neutral faces at the bus frequency, we displayed the, the other expression randomly. This allowed us to uh, highlight a specific uh, response for each expression, including uh, neutrality. Uh, thanks to this approach, yes, um, we isolated the brain response that reflects facial expression discrimination. It was already done uh, previously by Zelova, Jack, and Rocio, uh, but we extended uh, the observation in collaboration with them by showing that, that this response gradually increases with expression intensity and can be recorded by contrasting each expression with all the other. In the following study, we investigated the typical development of this response in young infants at 3.5 months and seven months. We have adapted the uh, previous paradigm by displaying the expression happiness, disgust, or neutrality uh, in different seconds at the bass frequency of six hertz, six picture per second. The other expression were randomly displayed every six picture uh, uh, at a uh, frequency of one hertz. We use this procedure uh, to have uh, a simulation uh, that was less constraining uh, for uh, the infant. We observed three things. First, a visual response emerge was observed over occipital temporal, uh, occipital, sorry, occipital region for both happiness and disgust at three and seven months. Second, the change from neutral to an expressive face, in other words, the detection of the occurrence of any expression, resulted in a distinct topography, more anterior on right side. Finally, seven months old, in, for seven months old infants and for happiness, the only expression uh, that has an attested meaning in seven months infants, we recorded a centrofrontal response probably reflecting a specific statute uh, for this expression as at this age. age. Thus, thanks to this approach, we were able to highlight the discriminative abilities of expression in infancy, as well as, as their evolution, evolution with age. In summary, young infant visually discriminate expressive faces. However, this ability seems to rely mainly on the detection of visual regularities in expression. And another mechanism uh, allows them to detect the occurrence of any expression, whatever it is, uh, that is the fact that, that the face is not neutral. Later, at seven months, the expression will develop different neural signatures depending on whether or not they become socially relevant to the infant. We also investigated uh, how this neural response is expressed uh, in patients with a specific genetic duration. Uh, this duration here yeah, frequently results in impairments in social cognition, notably facial expression recognition. 
These patients um, also have a high risk of de developing psychotic disorders. Uh, this study was performed with Caroline de Milly in Lyon. We used the same procedure as previously, displaying an expressive face uh, with in intensity gradually increased uh, among neutral faces. Um, we have observed that the response did not increase as well as much with the intensity in this patient uh, compared to typical adults. Moreover, this deficit was even more pronounced uh, when patients present uh, positive symptoms here. Uh, uh, these symptoms are, uh, are related to uh, psychotic uh, signs. Oh. Sorry. The association between amplitude of response of the presence of uh, psych psychotic uh, symptoms was also observed in, uh, in another study with twin, twins, both carrying the deletion, but only one of them was psychotic. And the psychotic uh, twin showed almost no response to intense expression, whereas the non-psychotic twin did. Thus, this approach allowed us to show visual response, okay, um, a visual um, uh, a deficit in the visual response in, in these patients associated with the emergence of psychotic uh, signs. We also use the FPVS approach to study uh, face categorization in four months old infants. In a, recent, in a recent study, Deering and Rossian reported a face categorization response in infants aged age, uh, four to six months. We used a similar procedure to study the extent to which this categorization response is sensitive to the surrounding odor, uh, namely the maternal odor. The procedure was to display picture of highly variable objects like this at the bass frequency including animals, food, building. Um, and every, every six pictures at a frequency of one hertz, we introduce a picture with a face. The infants uh, saw these sequences um, uh, in, two in two olfactory contexts. We disposed on their chest a t-shirt with which their mother had slept three nights, or a clean t-shirt. With this procedure, we really... Uh, it's not the good... Okay. The, with this procedure, so you have a face, every six picture here, and we replicated the brain response uh, found uh, by Doreen and Rossian. Moreover, this response was unanswered, amplified, by the presence of the maternal odors, uh, showing that maternal odor promotes the categorization of face uh, at the level of the brain response. In another experiment, we wanted to see if this effect of maternal odor was specific to faces. We repeated exactly the same procedure, but cars were displayed at one hertz, at one hertz here, instead of faces. Um, we did observe a categorization for cars, but this categorization was not influenced by maternal odors. These studies have therefore allowed us to show that maternal odors specifically participate in the acquisition of the ability to categorize face in infants. Just to conclude, uh, the FPVS EG approach is a powerful tool to study typical and atypical development. I thank you for your attention, and I thank the um, ECIT BFC for its support.
Thank, thank you very much for this uh, very nice talk. We have time for you for one question. Hello. The microphone is coming. So, so you mentioned you can monitor uh, psychotic disorder, uh, but I, I am not expert of that. But uh, does it mean this is? Uh, uh, th those are disorders that were not detected before e e by, by, uh, by any other means, rather than just symptomatic or behaviors. There were no, no uh, signal as no. you have... Uh, we know before that one of them was uh, uh, psychotic. Uh, the purpose was to see if um, we can see brain marker of uh, this uh, yeah. program. Right, but my, qu my question was, was there any... Uh, other method that uh, pointed to brain, that uh, any other brain marker that was identified before you, the, the brain marker that you have identified for psychotic disorder of this kind. Mm, I don't think so. There, there mm. are many correlation between uh, deficits in the neural response. Uh, for example, the coordination of uh, different brain regions that are associated with. Um, with the psychotic scene, uh, but the, the one of the points with this approach is that we can use it in patients in a very short time, and uh, even if they don't really um, uh, participate to tasks, for example. Mm -hmm. In this task, the, the participant uh, infants, for example, only saw uh, a sequence, and we have a brain response, a brain response in a very short time. I don't think it's the only way to see psychotic signs in the brain, but it's an efficient way to do it. But, and, and I have another question. Are those disorders, okay, this face recognition is very elementary, as I understood. Is it something that occurs, that starts in the early life? Uh, can you uh, also observe in those this psychotic infants that they have uh, disorders like... Uh, confusing right and left or top and down or things like that? Is it, if they have difficulties for recognizing faces, mm -hmm. if they have other kind of difficulties such as uh, uh, perceiving geometrical environment um, around them, just left, right or top down yes, or be yeah. Before, for, behind, or things like that? Or for, is it just something that is 2D, just an image, and this is not related to the three-dimensional perception? Uh, I, I'm not sure I, uh, I understood, but um, uh, this patient uh, have many problems, uh, including visual program for mm -hmm. uh, line orientation. Uh, but it's not a schizophrenic patient, for, for example, have less problem. Uh, another point, I did not mention it here, but um, we can use this approach with infants uh, with such deletions, and uh, it could help to, uh, um, to see marker or signs of uh, bad evolution, later evolution. Okay, I have one, one quick question to, uh, to end. Uh, so you studied face recognition in a child, in an adult. Uh, do elder people have some alteration in uh, face recognition? Sorry. Elder people. Elder? Old people, elder, elder people. people. Do they have an uh, alteration of face recognition? Uh, yes, uh, not so much, but uh, they can have other problems like memory problems that can alter their ability in face recognition. For expression, they are less efficient. Mm -hmm. they, are, they have some BAs. Uh, the tendency to see happiness in faces uh -huh. or positive expression in faces. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much. So it's, I think it's time to move to the to the next speaker. Thank you again.